Hi, Troy at the Full Setup, back with another video today. And today I'm going to give you a tour and sort of a review of my AMD 880K gaming build, which I have in this lovely NZXT Source S340 case. But I'm going to take you in for a closer look at that in a minute. So let's just talk about the 880K for a moment. Now, it's one of AMD's latest FM2 Plus processors, um, but it's not an APU. It's running on the Athlon um, range, which means it doesn't have a built-in GPU. So you're going to need to have an external graphics card for this. And you might think, well, why don't I just buy the APU? It comes with an R7 250. Yeah, yeah, it does come with an R7 250, and you can put another 250 with it and have dual graphics, but that isn't as good as running a just the Athlon processor at a high clock rate with an external GPU. Because to run this dual graphics, what you're going to do is you're going to put your processor under more stress. You're not going to be able to overclock your APU to a good rate because your built-in GPU is going to be using some of the power. You are also going to need loads of memory as well. You're going to need at least 16 gigabyte of RAM. You should have it anyway now for gaming, but you're going to need that at least for an APU running at a high megahertz because the built-in GPU on the APU does um, uses the memory. It doesn't have any system memory on it. It uses your RAM. So overall i think the price difference is quite similar the apu might work out a bit cheaper running the dual graphics but for the extra bit of money you will spend you will have a much better gaming performance so what's the processor got well it's running with a four gigahertz stock that's its stock power which is um 0.3 higher than the 870k um i mean the 860k only one point higher than the 870 well, why don't I just buy that chip? It's £8 more. I'll probably be able to overclock it to the same. Well, that's because it doesn't come with this cooler. This cooler is basically a cut-down version of the Wraith cooler. And when I mean cut-down, it's not smaller. It still performs the same. All it hasn't got is it just hasn't got the shroud around the fan and the red AMD light on it. And I don't use red light, so I'm happy to have this. And this... um. Uh, bundled CPU cooler is probably one of the best bundled CPU coolers I've ever seen and it comes on a processor which is under £70 um, and now you might be thinking yeah yeah it's a good cooler and it might be good for the first couple of weeks but can I overclock with this cooler yes you can overclock 100% with this cooler if you've got good air intake coming into your fan I was hitting 4.5 gigahertz with this cooler and I was hardly ever going over um, like 60 65 degrees but I was running the fan at full whack but it's not that loud if you've got a nice sort of I've got loads of other stuff popping off so really it's not that loud and my system fans are quite quiet now I have upgraded the um, uh, cooler which I'll show you in a minute um, and that's I've got it at 4.6 gigahertz I've started to upload some game reviews I'm not 100% stable with that yet I'm like 99% stable with the 4.6 think you may well be able to go higher with water cooling as well but 4.5 silicon lottery you're gonna hit the sweet spot um, but with overclocking does come a little issue and with AMD definitely it's very power hungry idle temperatures are 120 watt when um, that's idle that's just it not doing anything it's 120 watts basic web browsing watching some YouTube videos you're at about 160 170 watts um, video editing took it up to 250 and with a GTX 960 this is the super super clock version by EVJ's EVGA so it does use a little bit more power but it was at about 350 watts as well so you're definitely going to need a minimum 500 watt processor and if you're running some AMD graphics card which is also very power hungry I'd recommend a 600 watt 650 PSU just so you've got that extra bit of space so there we go there's just sort of um, all the specs on the processor well not the specs how I feel about the processor um, and where I've got it to and I will compare it to some other processors at the end but I think it's good now if I just take you into a closer look and give you a tour of the system and then I'm going to run some benchmarks as well and I, I know I mentioned 4.6 gigahertz but all the benchmarks are at 4.5 because I think that's what most people will be hitting so let's go in for that closer look now I'm not going to do a full sort of you know case review of the NZXT S340. If you want to go see that, please um hop over you know after you've watched this video and go and see someone's lovely video. But as you can see, I've gone for a sort of all white, all black. That's what I normally do. Like I uh, mentioned earlier, I don't like red effect. Um, the only thing I will say before I take the side panel off is that the window is really hard to clean without smears. Wouldn't recommend using LCD cleaner. You definitely just want to go buy yourself a bottle of window cleaner and give that a wipe once every couple of weeks um, to keep it nice and clean. When you're like, oh, look at that, look at that. And it gets, you know, finger marks everywhere. So I'm going to try my best. This is the first time we've done a tour around the build um, to show you everything that's inside the system. I start off by mentioning about the motherboard, which you can't really see in here. Now, it's a Gigabyte GA-F2A ATX D3HP, which um, if you want to see the unboxing of that, please go over to the channel and have a little look. 
but my issue with this motherboard is that you can't set it to under volt basically you can't set the voltage lower in the BIOS for this you have to use AMD overdrive you might say well why do I want to lower the voltage I'm overclocking Troy I want to up the voltage um, not really because what this sets it to um, the voltage at 1.444 it means it's actually throttling two of my cores down to 1.6 gigahertz so I am having to use AMD overdrive every time I turn it on to um, basically lower the voltage so I can achieve my clock which nobody really wants right back to the tour so up at the top here calling my um, quad core processor at 4.6 gigahertz we have the Fantex PH-TC12DX oh, these dashes are killing me which is as you can see is all in white and black and I really like that as well it definitely gives it a good look um, and then for the RAM as well backing up I've got 16 gigabyte of uh, HyperX DDR3 RAM it's 2400 megahertz but my overclock I'm not able to push it any higher than 2133 and as you can see um, I painted one of the sticks white as well and I will do a video later in the year showing you how to paint RAM without um, removing the heatsink. Now um, everything is all the cables really nicely managed due to this lovely shield which I absolutely love on the case um, and then there's various holes as well down the bottom and you've got another hole for when you're using bigger graphics cards. Over to the graphics card I have an EVGA GTX 960 super super clock 2GB um, card and I get asked a lot of questions. Does this card bottleneck the system does it bottleneck the processor and the answer is no if anything because it's a two gigabyte card this is my bottleneck at the moment at games like assassin's creed and the crew i'm not able to say it very much over medium and get good frame rates but i will be saying my next gpu is going to bottleneck the cpu because i'm going for a gtx um 1070 which apparently has got um coming with eight gigabyte of memory and it's faster than a titan so i can't wait for that um over to the cooling up the top here i have um, two bit for next Spectra Pros 120, although I am considering swapping the top one out for 140. And in the front here, I have two um, uh, pulled out of an older system Arctic F12 fans, which I've always been a fan of, the, of these because they're very cheap and they're really good and kind of quite quiet for their price but I have just ordered two 140 millimeter bit for next Spectra Pros to go in there as well um, down to the bottom of the system you're going to see my storage now I have an OCZ Trium 100 um, SSD it's not a particularly quick SSD as it's going it's quicker than a hard drive but the main issue being with um, it well not really an issue the only reason I'm using it is basically because I need more than 120 gig storage space like my old SSD had and the fact that I picked it up for under 40 quid at Black Friday the next hard drive as well which is um, set down in the bottom here is a 500 gigabyte it's just a Samsung drive which I pulled out of an old laptop which I'm using to store all my legally paid for downloaded films um, well, where am I putting my games? Well, my games are actually underneath here in the cable management area, um, and that is a one terabyte Western Digital Scorpio Black, which I bought off my friend for 20 quid last week, so I'm well happy with that. Um, and you also see my lighting kit as well here, which keeps the system nice and bright, and there's another one in the top. Um, underneath this as well, and I might quickly show you the back of it as well. It's a mess, but who cares, because it's hidden. Um, I've got a, oh God, what's the, what is my poor shoe? It's a Thermal Take Smart SE 530, which is a fully modular and it comes with all flat black, not fully modular, semi modular, and it comes with all flat black cables as well. Um, and it's a very cheap power supply and it's done me well. Um, it's, I think it's probably one of the best modular power supplies you can get based on performance and looks as well. So there we go. There's just a tour of the whole system. <laughs>
pounds the um, amd 80k processor is you know it's a fantastic little processor which is going to give you entry-level gaming performance and i think it is quite good um to mention it's like yeah it's not an i5 it's not an i7 it's not meant to be that it's not marketed at that but it doesn't mean that you need those processors to enjoy gaming I, I i'd sort of hate the emphasis that if you haven't got the best processor money can buy you can't enjoy gaming because you can all the videos prove that you can but I think really its closest competitor is the i3 6100 and maybe six seven months ago I would have said you know it's it's quite hard because yes it's a better processor and it's only 20 30 pounds more but at the time there wasn't a lot of entry-level motherboards that supported DDR4 um, memory so you weren't really getting that boost and all those sort of latest features that Intel are offering but now you can so I would say overall, if you do want a better processor at a sort of under £100 price with newer features and stuff, then definitely go ahead, buy the 6100. But if you want a, also a very good processor, which is cheaper, which brings you into the land of overclocking, it might be something that you've not done before and you want to have a play with that, or you could have some older parts, you might be running an APU that you're just not really that happy with and you just want that core clock rate, then I believe the A80K is definitely a processor that you'll enjoy um, and I definitely Definitely think you'll be having some really good gaming experience with it as well so please go over to the channel um, if you like this video hit subscribe I've got all loads more gaming benchmarks and um, loads of things that I think you'll like thank you for all the comments and all the subscribers um, I've been getting lately I'm really appreciative of it and I hopefully have some more builds for you soon